With each team having only one tank, it is very important what you bring to the table. You could be the absolute castle of a teammate and play Reinhardt. You can dictate the direction of all aggressive dives with Winston or Wrecking Ball. Oh. <laughs> and of course, you could just abandon your team entirely, whip out your trusty axe and kiss my ass, it's time to frag! Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Hey Simply is reviewing a tank hero again and doesn't want to explain why. Today I present to you a character who is just a damage hero but with inflated health points and fies. Such originality has never been seen before. There are many elements that make this hero great, like her wide arms, huge abs and big axe. Oh. With a simple gameplay of shoot bad enemy and press button if they come too close, I really like how everything comes together. All of the damage abilities feel super satisfying to use with reset gameplay of Carnage or reset the enemy back to respawn with throwing knife. Similarly to her neighbor Roadhog, most of the landed crowd control abilities translate to immediate death sentence, which is horrible, but not for me. Being an Overwatch 2 hero, I expected garbage, but as you might already tell, I have bought the golden weapon for her, which means it's still garbage but shiny. What about her impressive skin Shit. library and what about her original cinematic? Are these garbage too? Or is this hero sticking so well to her theme that this review can only be summed up as a dumpster dive? There's only one way to find out. Welcome to Junker Queen Review! Opening our story with some classy childhood trauma, because we don't have enough of it in Overwatch. Overall, Odessa's story is quite simple, and yes, if you didn't know, our queen goes by the name of Des. <laughs> These. <laughs> <laughs> These nuts. As I was saying, her and her stone family have been thrown out of town by the bad king Mason. You want the numbers, Mason. Due to no particular reason. While on the wasteland, which was 13 years ago, so not that long, I've been living in the wasteland for over 20 years, no big deal. Throughout this time, she learned many new skills and also built a hatred for Omnix because of the big war that took place. And that's completely understandable. Racism allowed in this case. What's cool is that apparently, all of her weapons, including the magnetic gauntlet, are built from the remains of her robotic enemies. So imagine if the conflict was swapped and there were murderous Omnics hunting around making weapons out of flesh and bones of eliminated humans. Why did I say that? We may never know. She slew many creatures like raiders, feral omnics and mutant mutants? Wait, what? So some kind of mutants are canon in this universe? Does that mean we could finally get a cool hero instead of a basic boring homo sapiens? I guess not. But thanks to her achievements, she has built a reputation for herself as a hero. Now roll the Overwatch title, yippee! After some time, the Junker Queen cinematic takes place, which is an event called The Reckoning, in which brave people fight in the arena to try and dethrone the current leader. And what a coincidence, the guy in the throne is our good old friend Mason. I'm not going to goof around, everyone has seen the cinematic, so in short, Des walks in. To people are sent in on her, and the king is being a fat boy doing nothing but drinking his worries away. This, thanks to her electric guitar skills, doesn't kill anyone, but proves she's better than them anyways. Showing mercy and being good at talking to people, she convinces the two of her enemies to be on her side, provoking Mason just enough to make him come. And so he does, using everything he has at his disposal, but that's not enough, because Odessa Stone is just better. Victorious, she becomes the president of Australia, and her first major change is throwing Mason out to the wasteland, then changing some rules, enforcing taxes, and befriending Hamster. And that's how simple blue-haired woman became the queen of Junkers. I'm just going to say it straight away, Junker Queen wins the award of having the worst possible legendary skin in the game. Congratulations! You suck! Overall, the design of Queen is very basic, a big, strong, muscular and most likely brain-damaged woman. Being the leader of Junkers, I expected, you know, more of Junkers in her core fit, but no, Blizzard really needs to show off as much skin as it's possible, and those sweet abs. Her weapons, on the other hand, make me happy, just as much as you pressing that subscribe button. You can clearly see these aren't weapons weapons massively produced in a fancy factory. You can see the battle-worn scratches and that's exactly what the kit should feel like. Out of the knife, axe and shotgun, the knife looks the most clean and proper. And her name is Gracie, by the way. Which means it's the worst. I adore the primary weapon of hers because it has those satisfying mechanical parts. The reload feels junky. And even the fire particles staying for a while after shooting bring me joy. But all of that is still not as great as the design of the Carnage. Yes, that's the official name of this axe. Like... 
Really? Everything about this weapon is a jackpot of good decisions. It looks like a bunch of trash, but it also looks like it could put multiple people to sleep with a single swing. The way you wind it up for quite some time brings that feeling of weight and you are slightly more aware that yes indeed, big steel objects weigh quite a bit. Also, this highlight intro has the best sound ever. Also, also, one last thing about the axe which adds more character to the queen herself, the little 90 degrees turn she does with it in the cinematic proves not only the axe has multiple uses, sharpie boy and frying pan, but it translates into showing that the queen even in the junker town, which is known for its primitive and barbaric like culture, can be kind and in reality she cares about the people around her. All of that thanks to carnage and that's what I call good design. But for each good design choice there is an awful one. So I ask you this, junker queen where the crown at? The most common misconception about Junker Queen is that she's a tank. Wrong! If you play her like a tank, you will simply put not be useful. Frontline heroes in the tank category like Reinhardt, Orisa, Sigma or even Roadhog have some form of abilities that allow them to stay in the more open and dangerous spaces either with barriers or health manipulation. Junker Queen's shout is too weak to sustain her for a long time. Its primary use shines in quick actions, unexpected turnarounds or clearly showing your team that it's time to go in. The slight bonus health you provide to your nearby allies can even save lives. But honestly, who cares about your allies? You're a damage hero after all. Focus on yourself and you should be fine. Queen shines the most in closed spaces where her axe swings can be brutal and the primary fire can shred in choke points. In the opposite scenario, in big open spaces, it's up to Gracie to misposition squishy targets and put them in enormous danger. The knife can also mess up the enemy tank's position, so don't be afraid to stick that sharp magnetic knife in their bum and wait for the perfect moment to ruin their life. Back to the big axe. It's one of little reset mechanics in Overwatch. What that means is that if you land this ability, you get rewarded with a shorter cooldown. This means the more you damage, the more damage you can make. Does that make sense? Absolutely not, just like her ultimate ability that I have a very strange relationship with. I don't love it, I don't hate it, and I don't even think it's in the okay tier. It just is what it is, flying in the enemy team, providing enormous value and praying to god they don't have Suzu already. <laughs> God, I hate Susan. Good moment to mention that all bleed damage that you cause with your Sharpie kitchen utensils is gained back in some percentage as health points, which means she can be the devastating frontline, but if you mess up a singular ability, or even worse, miss all of them, you are left to act as a punching bag for the enemies. Also lacking some form of movement ability, positioning is very important, but even more important is mispositioning your enemies. Picking your fights correctly and not trying to 1v5 all the time, I know it's tempting bronze players, but just chill Killing for a moment will reward you with small death numbers and enormous damage numbers. Also, I love how even if you miss your knife by retracting it, it can still apply that stupid bleed. CONCLUSION! Conclusion. Junker Queen has been one of the most hyped and anticipated heroes in Overwatch back in 2017. Her presence in the roster now is welcome, but it didn't hold the punch I expected. Her cinematic was great outside the weird pacing and thanks to it I am still wondering where did she lose her crown. It's nice to see another female tank for those sweet representation points Blizzard carves so much and honestly even though she screams her lungs out every game she's quite a likable character. That's why she will end up with a score of 2 apples out of 6 coconuts. I expected more junk themes from a literal queen of junkers, especially with the entire thread of her building weapons and armor from the remains of her deceased Omnix, but I guess that's a little too hard but I like playing this hero from time to time. As always don't forget to let me know down in the comments what hero would you like me to review next and it's time for a random tangent outro, yay! I was recently thinking about making more videos about in-depth looks into some of the abilities in Overwatch. Think Petal Platform episode, for example, and let me know what do you guys think about that, like an entire video about Genji's dash or Junkrat's mine. What do you think about that and what abilities, in your opinion, deserve an entire video to be made about them? Comment down below. For now, make sure you're subscribed because congratulations, you just watched the entire video, which means that it is time for me to say thank you for watching, have a lovely day, Bye-bye.